Hello and welcome to Still Got Legs, a Doctor Who rewatch podcast brought to you by another Happy Studios. This week, the TARDIS has landed somewhere truly impossible. Welcome to hell. These are the words of the beast. Oh, no, he's here. (laughs) He is awake. Oh, God. I've woken him up. I thought I was being quiet. No, it's just me. Oh, (laughs) it's just this immediate mess threatening. (laughs) It's just me. I was just being silly. Can I say that was a nice return to form for the intro? I feel like the last couple of weeks... Last uh, week was good. Fuck you. What, what, What was it last week? It was Coronation Street. Oh, it was quite good last week. I did well, make it up on the spot last week, but it was still good. Yeah, was, oh, was that was that pre-rehearsed? Today's was pre-written. Yeah. Okay, that's that surprises me because the vibe you were giving before we recorded was very much that of chaos. I am breaking the uh, the writer strike, and I am engaging <laughs> in writing material. But then again, it's allowed because I'm not a member of the Writers Guild. So, <laughs> so, you know, so I like how you're breaking the strike by simply never being part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even American. You couldn't no, even no. be in the guild. No, I could. You, you don't just have to be American. Do you not have to be at least like registered as a citizen in America? Well, to be honest, I have no idea how it works. Maybe you do have to be American because it is the Writers Guild of America. Yeah. So maybe. I feel like it does make sense. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like there's, there's a lot of British people striking. Maybe they're part of the writers... Guild of Great Britain. <laughs> the writers I guild thought of... a joke would come to me. Yeah, great. Didn't. Well done. Well, the Writers Guild of Great Britain aren't striking, Lawrence, and they don't exist. That's probably why they're not striking. Come yeah. To anyway, right? support the strikers. Up the unions. Up the strikers. Yeah. Uh, but but we on? will still be rehearsing our intros. We will. St- unlike Ryan Reynolds, we are allowed to improvise or whatever's going on. So what? What is all that? Is he like not allowed to improv on Deadpool? Yeah. So it was going to be great. Um, <laughs> uh, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show where we talk about Doctor oh, Who. Oh, yeah, it's Doctor Who. Still got legs. Um, no, I said all that. We know what it is. To be fair, they're here. Yeah, like what, what are we now? Season two, episode what? Season two, episode, I want to say eight. Eight. So we're getting in. We're, we are. We're... we're getting in. We're more than halfway through season two. Doesn't feel like that. It feels like we're just kicking off still. Nah. Well, well into it by this point. Think of all the Mickey drama we've had. He's kind of oh, gone. That's true, yeah. Like that song. What's that song? You know that one. Anyway, um, <laughs> Lawrence, the TARDIS has landed in a cupboard, as it yes. often does. Yep, it does often land in a cupboard. That's true. David uh, Tennant has got some wonderful hair. Yes. Billy Piper has got some wonderful hair. Mm. And they both emerge from the TARDIS. Just looking incredibly attractive and incredibly yeah. beautiful and having some fun. I d- right, let me just... I have a confession. All right. Is it that you are now bisexual? Yes. No. Oh, <laughs> a shame. <laughs> no, um, it's that for the first time today... Can I, I interrupt s- you? I feel like you already have. Okay. Well, I just need to say quickly, I should have said this at the beginning... But this is Season 2, Episode 8, The Impossible Planet, written by Matt Jones and directed by James Strong. You may continue. Thank you. I saw it today for the first time. What, this episode? No, 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 no. no. Sorry, no, I can see how that would be misleading. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, on that point, I haven't seen this in an extremely long time. Like, upwards of of like five to six years. Lovely. Sorry, so, I was taking a drink. So this was quite this was quite fresh for me. No, today was the first time I saw it. So the, what? You keep saying it. Yes, I'm getting there. This is dramatic build. Oh, you're build. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. You're just tearing me down. You're building the tension. On my quest for tension building. <laughs> I'm just breaking it down. Like what? Today, Nathan, was the day I saw it. Oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> just tell her. So even though the brown coat is absent, the doctor oh! is supporting. No, no. Yes. <laughs> Even though the Doctor is sporting a brown coat, I like that combo. I want to make it known I like the brown suit, brown coat combo. Not me. The brown suit, brown shirt combo. It's too much brown. 
different kettle of fish. Yeah, it didn't look great. First of all, it's the same amount of brown. So like, yeah, but it's. It, I feel like it's different. It's it's like a different texture, different layout. Like, what if he had brown coat, brown suit, brown shirt? Brown pants. He shit himself. <laughs> no, Lawrence. <laughs> Just <laughs> you won't get that kind of improv <laughs> on the Ryan's Guild of America strike. Tell you that much, Lawrence. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that would be too much brown. I completely agree. But they do emerge. I can't very attractive wait until season three starts, and we've got that oh, that beautiful blue suit. Oh, I can taste it. It's almost here. It's, it's not so the close. blue suit. It's not the blue suit. I don't. I don't have a problem with the blue suit. Like, if I have you're a problem with the blue the suit and the red Burgundy shoes. Converse, it's great, man. The blue and red is an excellent color combination. There, are, there is a reason that the colors of so many flags are blue and red because it's a beautiful combination. It the works matrix, together the, very the well. The matrix has changed, you Nathan. All this blue and red <laughs> talk. <laughs> I've studied color theory. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do emerge very, there's a lot of good tenant hair in this there is it, do, it looks so good man yeah I don't know whether they're like because I thought at one point it's like maybe the start of the the, the gel era. I, I, know, I know the exact episode that starts there's even a line about it in the episode oh go um, on it's coming up I won't reveal but it is okay. coming up yeah alright but there's maybe it's just the close ups to his head but there's a lot of moments you can see like I feel like he recently had a haircut for this episode. It looks very soft. It does. It looks like he's got some great conditioner going on. Mm. Looks very soft and fluffy. Uh, Ruffleable. Is that yeah. a word? Yeah, I feel like it's ru- ru- ruffle. Uh, yeah, ruffleable. Ruffleable doesn't sound like a word. But Mark Ruffleable. <laughs> yeah, Mark Ruffleable. So that's the kind of improv yeah. you won't get on the writers' game yeah. of America. Strike. Good luck, Deadpool. That's what I'll say. <laughs> Okay, I'm missing out on gold like Mark Ruffler below. <laughs> Very good. Side note, um, um, can I just say, there's someone camping in my back garden. What? There's just a tent in my back garden. You you needed to have addressed that before now. <laughs> we were speaking for a good 10 minutes before we were recording. We've been recording for about 10 minutes. What is going on in your garden? I should say, I live in a building, so it's a shared garden. It's like a communal garden. But like, <laughs> it's not just your dad. It's, <laughs> it's not just someone's just set up a tent in my own back garden. <laughs> so what, anyway. someone's... I did that, though. Did you never camp outside with your dad in the garden? Yeah, I did. Well, we went out into the woods. We were real outdoorsmen. Oh, no. Come, come on, to be fair, I went out to the woods. I was part of the scouts. I went to the woods. No. Stop it. Tins of beans and sausages. Um, I want to say no, but I think I probably did. Yeah, it's a good meal. Yeah, a little tinny around the fire. That's it's not, not what tinny, tinny is. <laughs> <laughs> They've landed in a cupboard, Nathan. I just said that. Like, yeah, why was getting ago. us back there? <laughs> All right, we'll go on then. Finish your point. Thank- <laughs> no, that was my point. They've landed in a cupboard. They certainly emerge, and an episode ensues. I'll, t- I'll tell you that. <laughs> Oh, the disapproving look I'm getting. All right, the first note I've got is that they... I really like how, like, they're now just here. They're like, there might be some trouble here. And they're like, should we go somewhere else? And the doctor's like, nah. They they just have an immediate stroll. They're having some fun. They're having banter. They're having... Look at us. We're in a relationship, but maybe we're not. But maybe we are. We're having fun. A lot of that this episode. (laughs) Well, some of it. No, they're, they're properly overly familiar. Like, I like that they just land now and they're like, we could be walking into, like, we could be just opening the door in space. Like, this this may have been, this this whole place, this sanctuary base is already falling apart. For all they know, they could just be walking into a black hole, but they're like, let's go. Yeah, well, they don't know that, though. No, 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 but I just like how they just, is without without even thinking about it, they're just like, let's go and explore. Yeah, but be fair, more often than not, they don't walk into a black hole. So, look, the law of averages is on their side. (laughs) Every time I leave my house, there is a possibility, albeit a very, very tiny one, that I could walk into a black hole. Yeah, I suppose that's true, actually. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson's listening to this seething. (laughs) He's quaking. (laughs) No, I think he'd back that one, to be honest. He he probably would, to be fair, yeah. He's probably, like, expecting it. Like, there's a slim chance, but he's probably ready for it every time he leaves his house. Oh, not this time. (laughs) 
Was that your impression of Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yeah, that was Neil deGrasse Tyson, everyone. Uh, They encounter a a a scripture, uh, some some symbols and languages written. Welcome to hell. It says on the wall. Bit bit on the nose. (laughs) Was it? Yeah, I mean, this the, they come up against the actual devil. What do you What do you mean a bit on the nose, though? Well, no, not not in a bad way. But just I like the idea of the devil has sat there and written out "Welcome to Hell" on his on his in his scriptures. Do you not think? I don't think he has. So who's wrote "Welcome to Hell"? Danny, probably, or Toby. Oh, Toby's the one that does it. He takes them all off the. Yes, he take he takes all the markings off the wall and re yeah. right. So so someone yeah, has wrote but, "Welcome to Hell." Yeah, but not the devil because they can't translate it. So who's putting Welcome to Hell up then? Toby. Oh, so he's not happy. All right, Lawrence, an oud jump scare occurs. The doors swing open and we get a big face full of like half-eaten spaghetti. Yeah. Love Great an oud. fucking design. Love an oud, man. So yeah. good. Great design. Looks so good. First appearance of them with their big kind of, yeah, tentacle head. Very cool. I like their um. Who who voices them? Silas Carson. Silas Carson is Ooh. good. Oh, guess who else this gun is voiced? Go on. What about the droid attack on the Wookies? No, really. Yeah, Kiari Mundi, and also I won't do the voice, uh, but Viceroy Newt Gunray as well. Oh, oh God, yeah, don't yeah, do the voice. I'm not doing that voice. <laughs> but... Oh, what? So he's voiced them in Clone Wars? No, in the movies. Oh really? Yeah. Was well, so he plays Ki Adi Mundi because Ki Adi Mundi's a person? Yeah, yeah, but a different voice to who? It'll be a different voice to the guy who actually plays him. Will it? He talks. Yeah, but so does Maul. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Why wouldn't they just cast the guy who voices him? Seems easier. Because you gotta have the right look. To play like a dick. What, and a that. fucking 10 inch forehead? Yeah, what, what that fucking. There's that guy whose whole shtick is he'll play a weird thing. Oh, Andy Circus. No. <laughs> well, yeah. <Is> yeah. <laughs> but that's not the one I meant. The, um, the fish monster. You know the movie about the one who has sex with the fish monster? Oh, the, yeah. The, the, fish, um, the guy. The theory of everything. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, no, not that. No, 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 no. Lawrence once again being ableist. No, that's not podcast. true. The shape of water. Is the what shape it's of water. <laughs> I don't know why the theory of everything came into my mind. I know why. No, stop it. You're nasty. Digging um, himself into a hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a good, a good fake out with the oud. What do you mean? Well, they, 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 you know, they're like. Sorry, I'm just reading up on this guy, Silas Carson. Oh, okay, no, please do tell. Well, no, it's mostly boring stuff, but. Oh, um, I'm glad that's more interesting <laughs> to you than this, then. In Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, Carson also plays two other speaking parts: uh, the senator in the Trade Federation, Lot Dodd, um, although his voice was then replaced with uh, actor Toby Longworth, um, and he plays someone else. I'll be honest, it's ironic that Toby wrote Welcome to Hell, mm. because that's how I feel listening to any more Star Wars. <laughs> By the time this is out, there's like a fucking two and a half hour long podcast we just did yeah. about Star Wars. It's it's our longest podcast uh, episode yet of another happy pod. Um, and this one, I guess. But yeah, go listen. Yeah. It's a great time. It is a great time. I haven't even started editing yet. I'm quite scared. <laughs> you might want to hurry up, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, a fake, fake out with the Ood. Uh, they they must feed. They must feed credits. They must feed them if they're hungry. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Nice. I did enjoy that. The the bride. I like how the ten pulls out his Sonic in I was true ten about, fashion. What's he gonna do with that man? What can he do against? I the think Ood? he could do any number of a billion <laughs> things. He can't though. He can't. He can open a door. He can open some wire. He can cut a rope. None of which are gonna help him in this situation. Yeah, he might. He might be. He, there'll be something. He could turn off the circle things, little orbs that they help. They oh, hold. great! So the translator. Yeah, and then kick him down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> he could do that without turning off the translator. Yeah, but he could think it might do something, and then when it only turns off the translator, he go fuck it and kick him down the stairs. <laughs> great, Rosa. Rosa's Rose is more practical. She picks up a fucking chair. She's ready yeah. to go. <laughs> She's gonna fucking swat them. She's ready to throw down. WWE and, style. 
I do, I do like that. But they they go in and they meet a, a crew, very sunshine esque crew. No, this um, is the sunshine episode. No, I know, I know. Forty two is the sunshine episode, but what I'm yeah. saying is just a bunch of grubby looking people that are all kind of like semi miserable, more alien than sunshine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's the ood. <laughs> that helps. I mean, yeah, I guess. But... <laughs> um, we get the yeah, we get a little rundown <clears throat> of who they all are. There's an acting captain. There's uh, a security guy. There's um, a Toby who is the like chief nerd. I don't know what his actual job was, but it seems that he's mostly figuring shit out. Archaeologist or some shit like that. He's. X, yeah. X, X, I don't know. Summon. He's, he's, an, he's an archaeologist. Yeah, fuck it. He is, he is that now. Let's call him that. Um, mm. I do like the... <laughs> I, 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 always, I always like the amount of people that are like, How do, who the fuck are you to the Doctor and Rose? How did you get here? What yeah. the fuck is going on? Yeah. That's always very fun. Um, well, and then well we... it makes sense. Imagine you're like working on a fucking oil rig. Like... Mm there's no way anyone can get there without you know you're miles away from land um, and then just two people show up and you haven't seen anyone else in like six months or whatever you'd have some questions it's true yeah and the chief of security i like the chief of security just wearing a leather jacket so i'm the tough they're one. all that's the uniform mate they're all all the security is wearing leather jackets he's got, I mean, they've got like he's got dog tags on and it's yeah. like what oh, it's a good I'm look cool. it is it is a good look um, we find out some lore about the Ood. <laughs> if you were enjoying them and their presence here and their like helpful nature of hoping to feed the Doctor and Rose, and you thought that was a good good time, yeah, you're immediately blasted with <laughs> with some like Ood, uh, like yeah, just slavery, just outright slavery. Yeah, not great. I like how they go. Oh, you're not one of them friends of the Ood types, are you? And Rose is like. I, it sounds like that's the right side to be on. <laughs> I think I might be. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, one of them, Danny, is introduced as the head of the ethics committee, and that guy is like, he's head of the ethics committee, and he's like, yeah, we got slaves. Look, <laughs> and <laughs> like, yeah. What's your point? They love what's, it. What's your point? They love it. Our slaves are happy to be slaves. Yeah. Oh, why does that sound familiar? Yeah. Um, look, it's not good. What the episode or the Ood stuff? The the, oh, the slavery stuff. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, the doctor. There's there's like a little mm. earthquakey type situation. Um. They lose well, a part of the base. They're not on Earth, so it's not an earthquake. Oh fuck off! It's they have a planet <laughs> quake then. So there is there is a planet quake, a, a term I originally coined because they're as you would know. Oh for fuck's sake! Earth. Just get past it. <laughs> I need to say it for the next thing. Um, and the, the TARDIS uh, gets not not blasted into a black hole. It's on the other side of that. It gets it falls down a big old hole. The TARDIS falls down the plot convenience hole. Yeah, I, I my next note literally <laughs> says something along the lines of how many times does the TARDIS get Professor x so yeah, that the Doctor yeah. has to stay somewhere? Well, it has to. It makes sense because otherwise the episode would be over within a heartbeat. So yeah. Everyone Look. get in the TARDIS and let's go. It's a great doorway to get them to the situation, but immediately after that, you need to get rid of that fucking thing. And then... <laughs> because otherwise it can be solved. And la- although, saying that though, I'm, there are, there is some more like creative ways to use it down the line that, that do come up. But but yeah, but yeah I'm, I'm all right with it. Get rid of it. Get it out what, of there. Creatively using in the TARDIS in the story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a good point, actually, because mostly... In the revival series up to this point, it has just been get them to a location. Yeah, it's true. It yes. doesn't do much during the episode. It's literally just the get in, get out, off your bob yeah. sort of Yeah, I can't believe we haven't spoken about this before. Because, that it, it, yeah, it seems like so much untapped potential so far. Exactly. There's a, there's a lot of untapped potential with the TARDIS. I'm like, it's, it's a fascinating... It's one of the most fascinating things about Doctor Who, I think, and um, it, 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 it's 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 a tease and it's a shame because even the stupid stuff, like when the Doctor says, "like 
I think it's it's Christopher Eccleston at some point, I'm sure it is, but when he says, like, down that hallway there, take a left, take a right, or whatever, there's no doorway. There's no hall. It's just that one room. We can all see it. All right. Yeah. But I'm always interested to to see the other parts of the TARDIS, but we never we never quite get it. We never quite get there. We see we see the Doctor change his clothes in the Christmas Invasion, which is just one it's corner the of the set room. with a coat on it. Yeah, it's, exa- it's the exact same room. They've just put a coat rack in there <laughs> and then hung a few like scarves over the fucking the pillars or whatever they are. Yeah. I just, do you reckon that because that that does that shot does reveal that the TARDIS goes up in floors rather than expands outwards, it, at least in this well, version in, of the TARDIS. In, well, that room does anyway. Do you reckon there's a lift in the TARDIS? I'd imagine so. Yeah. Otherwise, you just that's fucking a lot. That's a lot of stairs and a lot of walking around to be going around in. Well, there's a whole episode where they get lost in the TARDIS, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to get back there. I haven't seen that one in a while. Um, what? <laughs> it's mostly what, corridors. <laughs> what do you? What do you actually like make of this episode? Because the next point I've got is kind of about the episode as an overall thing. Absolute banger. Do well, this one? You think? Yeah, yeah, banger. One of the best of season two so far, I think. Yeah, I, I, I can think. Cause I, I like it and I dislike it for certain reasons that kind of conflict with each other. Right, One, let's fight. Let's fight. Why'd you dislike it? No, no, no. No, I, uh, no, I want to fight. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> let's fight then, yeah. Um, so <laughs> the reason I dislike it is because it feels like there's a lot... I, I know the natural kind of state of a two-parter is that the first part is a lot of stuff happens. We talked about that in Age of Steel and Rise of the Cybermen and stuff. Right, there's... it. The part one is always a lot of build-up. But on the on the flip side of that, I like the build up because it's a lot of human moments. But I also the trade off is that not much happens. See, I would say this is um, a a lot better than the first half of the Cyberman story, and it it doesn't just feel like half a story. It doesn't just feel like a build up. This episode on its own, it doesn't feel like like when I was watching it, there was no part I was like, ah, oh, this is dragon. This is all just nothing's really happening i think a lot of exciting stuff happens in this episode and i think like it's quite well paced yeah no i i look i do i do get it for that those reasons but i feel like it's i don't know i feel feel like the first 20 minutes is just kind of like them on the ship and the slight tease that something is happening on the ship like the ship the oom say some weird stuff every five seconds yeah that's what's good about it so I know. I, I tease. like it. <laughs> the tease is really good. The the slow reveal of this ethereal beast, whatever it is, and the whole fucking mm. he is awake. Don't turn around. That so I tell you good. what, that is chilling, fun. man. Chilling. That is very very good. I've got the um the guy's name. Uh, where did I put it? Gabriel <laughs> Wolf. Um, oh, that's me. Oh, is that you? Yeah. Oh, that's give, my give stage a, name. Show us again how it goes. Don't. Turn around. Oh, chills. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but he he's very he's very very good. Um, is that without what's Gabriel Wolf? Sorry, that's the Gabriel. voice actor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I, I I do like those moments. I just feel like those moments are a little bit kind of far and few between. But um, other than supposed to be, you don't want you don't want it overloaded with that. It's a it's a nice little tease. Mm. So it's it's good. It's good horror. I think I think there's some really good horror elements to this episode. Oh, the, the like the parts where like Toby is outside with the no atmosphere on the surface mm. and he's just grinning and yeah, using the force and stuff like a bit cheesy, but it's great cheesy horror. Like yeah, it, and it is it is unsettling and creepy. They chose a guy with great teeth for a big creepy smile. He's got he's got a big creepy face. Yeah, it, uh, it works well when he's got that the big smile and the markings all over him and stuff. It looks really good. He he's good going, kind of back and forth as well. Because the, yeah. there's moments where he stops getting possessed, and he always just looks confused as fuck. Yeah, and and you you're never quite sure. Like, is this real? Is is he is he confused? Is it is it an act? Is it yeah. what's, what's going on? Um, and it's it's very good. I enjoy it. And I will say this. Um, for a show that looks mostly terrible during this era, mm. um, the black hole looks great, man. It looks you know, really he, good. I was pleasantly surprised when they open. I 
when that when I saw that there was a big sunroof, essentially, I was like, "Oh, yeah. they're hiding it because of budget." I get that. Yeah. And then he opened it, and I was like, "No, what are they scared about? This looks great. This it looks does cool. Look great. Sure, oh, it, it's not HD or whatever. It looks a bit blurry, but it's fine, man. It's yeah. Great. For the when again, when you put it all in the context of the era, this is yeah. top tier stuff. Like the werewolf a few episodes back. Yeah. Not not great. <laughs> not terrible, but. This I think this is this is like you say a cut above I think the crillotane, not great. Yeah, that's probably the better example. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What else? Um. um it has got nice moments. Um. Between, I feel like the Doctor shows his age a little bit in some scenes in this. I feel well. like uh, Tennant gives a really good performance. Um. There's there's lovely moments like. The whole, you know, beware of looking at this black hole. Some say it, it makes some people go mad. Yeah. And and the, and she goes to close it, and the doctor <laughs> says, "I'll leave it open for a bit longer." And she said, "He says I won't go mad. I promise." And she says, "How do you know?" And the doctor just kind of like has a polite grin. Mm. Not not gr- grin's the wrong word. It's kind of like a, a bemused smile. And it, and you just get the sense that this is all so minor for him. Like the shit <laughs> that he's seen is so far elevated a- above this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I just really, really, really like that this a uh, fucking a uh, life altering <laughs> visualization of a black hole is just something that he's like, this is second nature to me by this point. I'll tell you what I like. I am. Um, I really like moments of the doctor and this, this can be any doctor. Ten does it very well. He does it well in this episode, but all, all the doctors do it great in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the doctor just really loving and enjoying and celebrating humans just those moments yeah. where he's like human beings are amazing and it's it's just mm. it gives the captain a hug just because he he loves that these weird little cunts just came out here to see a black hole <laughs> i love that man it's so good and it, it's always usually <clears throat> followed by a reminder that he's a very alien person yeah and these are not his kind of customs because he's like, you guys, you'll just go wherever you go because it's here. And that is brilliant. And that's great. And then immediately in the same breath, he's like, of course, you should probably all leave because you're going to die. But mm. and then like, yeah, it just immediately back to like facts and <laughs> the doctor destroys the captain with facts and logic. <laughs> stop. You got to stop doing that. Man. You got to stop bringing that up. <laughs> you doing that a lot lately. <laughs> I know. It's been in my mind. <laughs> Um, it's because I mentioned it like two weeks ago or something. You haven't been able to stop since. Um, Just recycling jokes. You're not going to get that with the Writers Guild of America. <laughs> no, no, you will, Lawrence. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I think it's a good contrast because that, that type of stuff can often be used and, and is sometimes used as like, oh, you know, human beings, amazing, great. But then there's like a... Oh, maybe you're not so great because you've got slaves, and you know, maybe you're not as nice as I thought. Dude, I was gonna say it's somewhat brushed mm. over, but Rose gets a bee in her bonnet about Rose, it. Rose, Rose really doesn't like it, and I like that. I like that Rose has kind of, uh, sort of become the voice of compassion. Mm. Really, it's it's a voice that's much needed. Um, and, and and I feel like the doctor definitely would be against it. He just doesn't have time, really. Yeah, he's like, like, there's so much other shit. There's so much, like, the devil's here, maybe, or whatever. Like, this place is, like, 666 or some shit, man. Like, he's well, got to figure it out. She always has been like that. Like, right from the, yeah. the second episode of the entire show, she's the one that speaks to the, the plumber before the yeah. plumber gets killed. And, like, yeah, I, I, I do like that she is, she does kind of, fall into that compassionate space like you say where the doctor is always so busy um there's there's a really really nice kind of moment in this where rose it like she always tries to open up to the people she feel like she feels like doesn't don't have a voice necessarily yeah yeah um and and she does so to the the ood that is serving her food yeah the dinner lady uh, ood yeah, and, and she's like, I was a bit of a dinner... Firstly, fun little callback to School Reunion and, like, you know, I was a dinner lady once. The worst episode once. of season two, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it's it's just nice and... I'll tell you what, speaking of uh, School Reunion, some great mm. Anthony Head acting this week, out and about. There was, actually, yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> anyway. I've I seen it. <laughs> little tease <laughs> we'll be talking about that on another happy pod <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I've I, just as a continuation onto that like the Rose kind of seeing 
herself in the Ood is is really interesting, I think, because she, a lot of people say, like, you know, they're happy to be controlled and they want orders and they just meander around until they're told what to do anyway. And then Rose is very defiantly saying, like, I was like that once, you know, like, I was directionless and happy just to go about and do whatever people say, but that, that's not to say that that's all this this thing is capable of. Yeah. Um, yeah, just I, I really, really like Rose in this episode. I think she comes off good as the She's only great. one that correctly blasts slavery. Yeah, as she should. As she yeah. should. And I, and I do like that moment where she's talking to the youth. It's, it's a really good bee where she's she just like asks it a question and then he just goes, the beast and his army shall rise from the pit to make war against God. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know, enjoy your mush or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there was something just about the the flatness of that delivery. It was so good. It was very funny. Yeah, very funny. It, it was like that. You, you put that. It's like you put that into a teleprompter or something, and it just yeah kind of recycles it back to you. Yeah. Um, they are they are like you say the, the teases in this are quite good, and the ood are like the most prevalent with the tease. The ship yes. gets a few little one liners in there. That's quite creepy. But... Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, it, yeah. do you see the, the you see the devil on the monitor at one point, right? You do, yeah. It, it does a little, like when everyone's got their back turned, it goes ah rah, I'm screaming. Yeah, maybe that, maybe that's where Rose learned the trick for her reappearance in midnight. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's like, I'm gonna wait till everyone turns around. And she's gonna go, hey, I'm on the I'm on the TV. <laughs> I'm on the TV. That happens a few times. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, we get some Tardis cannon, I think. Maybe the first mention in the revival series about how the Tardises are grown rather yeah. than built. We mentioned this not long ago, didn't we? I think we did when we were talking about yeah. the Doctor's sexy Tardis wife. What? We we had a conversation about the Doctor's wife episode being the Tardis. I don't know if we did. I'm sure we did. No, I think we were just talking about a, a deleted scene in Journey's End, where he like gives them a bit of Tardis. Oh yeah, yeah we may have been doing that as well. Maybe I'm misremembering yeah you have a bad memory um <laughs> <laughs> yes but tardis is a groan yeah what does that look like Big plant. as in like yeah but as in like the heart of the tardis is grown or does it like actually grow the console and don't know me because the tardis changes itself at will like you shut the door you leave it to cook for an hour or so and then it yeah you open it up and it's like look at me I've got a new outfit. <laughs> well, t- Time Lord technology, I guess, regeneration's a thing. So yeah, that's true. There's, uh, I'm, they can they can have self replicate, not replicating self, um, like cell regeneration kind of thing. No, no. What's the word I'm looking for? Self, like to change something. Self um, evolution. Kind of, not really though. More. Mechanical. I know. What you, I know what you're getting at. Yeah. Re- repair, know, repairing, or like... yeah, kind of, but not really, because repair just implies fix. But self update, yeah, we will be here until we find the right <laughs> word. No, we won't. It's whatever. <laughs> it can change. Basically, it can change itself. Yeah, seemingly at random, but. In in that conversation where they're talking about how the TARDIS <clears> is gone, because they they bring it up because Rose is like, we could make a get another TARDIS or something. Yeah, uh, and the Doctor's like, yeah, no, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um. In that conversation, they have one of and I because I haven't seen this episode in quite some time. This I genuinely think because it, it, I came at it completely fresh. This is such a nice, probably one of my favorite Ten and Rose scenes. Of them talking about how they'd have to, the doctor would have to get a mortgage and settle down, and he, you know, he's saying like, "No, I'd, I'd literally rather die." And Rose keeps bringing, circling the conversation around to like, "We could, I'd have to do it all too. Maybe we could get the same mortgage and we could live together." What do you, what do you think? (laughs) It's, it's a little awkward from, from both of them at that point. Yeah, they're both just kind of like dancing around the subject is that oh this is clearly both what we want but neither of us are brave enough to admit this yet so was just <laughs> yeah we'll see okay um yeah let's just good, good thing it never comes to that so they never yeah. have to admit it that they might have had that at one point yeah yeah exactly no just i yeah it wouldn't i think it's huh? it wouldn't have worked out no um because of doomsday <laughs> 
<laughs> no, sure. no, it, it ends. It ends with a nice like. The doctor, the doctor is just hyper focused on being stuck somewhere, and Rose is like, "Yeah, but you know, at least I'm stuck with you. That's an added bonus." Yeah, that's kind of cute. Which, which I think is, is I like really that nice. he's thinking of Jackie though as well. Mm. He uh, he mentions that he promised Jackie he'd always get her home and stuff. Yeah, and Rose is like, "Nah, don't worry about it." I I'm thinking I'd thought in that moment how the ninth Doctor would react to this, and it'd just be like, "Thank God I'm stuck here, and then I'll never have to explain this to Jackie." Well, and yeah. Ten is like, "I actually quite like Jackie. She's kind of a friend." <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for this. I reckon Nine likes Jackie. I reckon Nine liked Jackie, but he also he had no patience He's... for Earth trivial things. I reckon he was more scared of her than anything. Yeah, yeah. He put on a brave facade. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> did you think the space where the Ood slept was very like, or not slept, but like, you know, they were all sat up in a line and yeah, it felt very like changing room PE, wait for the teacher yeah. to come back in. God, I hated that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something about that felt like, like mm. kind of like prisoner campy, like, well, they are slaves. <laughs> yeah, I know. But just like I, the way it was shot, I don't know. I just looked at it and I was like, that's. Kind of upsetting, kind of unsettling imagery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, again, they're slaves. They're, not much thought is given to their accommodation or their yeah. comfort or anything like that. It's just, what's the cheapest solution? Put them down there. They mm. can all do what they need to do or whatever. Yeah, not great. Um, not great indeed. What else happens in this? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, rip to whatever her name was. Um, yep, yeah, she certainly was 20 years old. Fucking uh, I'm old. <laughs> did you, did your heart old. just sink there for a moment? Yeah, I didn't like that moment. <laughs> She's 20 years old, and it's like, oh, I remember being younger than 20. <laughs> I like how you know, I didn't like that moment. Not because a woman died and they had a very solemn viewing experience to her being sucked yeah. into a black hole to be forgotten forever. You're just like yeah. I remember when I was young. Yeah. When I, I first watched this episode, I would have been I want to say thirteen. Um, young, younger than twenty. So. <laughs> and boy, have the turntables <laughs> indeed. Um. Yeah. So she. Um, she yes. Dies. She dies. She was underwater, and they filmed her, and then she's in space. Yeah. Yeah. That checks out. Is that a fact? Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fact. You can tell. I know you can tell, but like, I've seen Doctor uh, Who Confidential. Ah, oh, I see. I remember, do you remember the first episode where I watched Doctor Who Confidential? I was like, I'm going to do this every week. <laughs> You've never done it since. Have you? Last it lasted one week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's you all over me <laughs> I was yeah but this show is fucking it's something else now isn't it like <laughs> yeah it certainly is something far less what, what was the review we got this week you guys certainly went off the rails <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um the well, what spoken. else happens they, they the drill the doctor wants to go down because the TARDIS is probably down there um and they're like, no, we're not going to stop drilling. And then the drill does stop. So they're, they're like, let's go and investigate the drill. Yeah. Um, we get the... I didn't realise this had become somewhat of a thing. Iconic is the word you're looking for. Yeah. And I just... I didn't realise that there was like a... We now have <clears> to squeeze every doctor into an orange space suit at some point. Well, first of all, what do you mean we have to? It is a privilege. <laughs> All right, it is an absolute honor for anyone. Everyone is counting down the day until they can get inside that beautiful orange spacesuit. Does it have all of them? Well, well, from this point on, it does, yeah. So, Eccleston obviously didn't, yeah. Eccleston didn't, he missed out. What was Matt Smith's one? Several. Several? Yeah, a few different orange ones. Orange suits. Yeah. Um, Capaldi? Again. Well, no. I think one of them in particular was maybe I'm misremembering but uh in an episode in season 10 where they're like on this sort of space station hmm. um but yeah he definitely wears it at some point um and Jodie Whittaker's was her last episode yeah I remember seeing it in that one that yeah. was uh was Jack there 
Uh, no. <laughs> he wasn't invited back. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So I'm... Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> no, you're thinking... I don't know. You're thinking of the prison jumpsuit. She was I in prison. am. Yeah, she was yeah. in like a, a orange-reddish prison jumpsuit. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Um, Rose gives the Doctor a little kiss on the spaceship oh. forehead thing. Well, I, I just going back to the spacesuit, I like the idea the the Doctor put on this spacesuit and he just loved it so much. He's like, I reckon I'm going to keep this. I'm going to rip the logo off it, the little badge off it, and I'm just going to keep it forever, I think. And this will is, it, be, is it the same one? It's the same design. It's the exact same design minus the little, like they have their like, company whatever thing logo on it. Yeah. It's, but it's the same design minus that bit. So interesting. I didn't know they kept it the yeah. same. I thought it was just like what shenanigans will land the doctor in a orange jumpsuit this time. No, it's the same one. And we'll see ten in this again, actually, uh, down the line. Um but yeah, it's the same one. My gosh. Fair enough. Um but yeah, so they they get down there and there's somewhat of a <clears throat> vault situation. You you say a vault, Lawrence. I've I've got a line written here, as uh, so a note written here. Uh, when the, when they go down the uh, the shaft, they go down the elevator, down down into the pit. Let's say uh, Rose says, "What's it like down there?" And I just said to myself, "Well, Rose, imagine a quarry in Wales." <laughs> and uh, and if you can believe such a thing. <laughs> That is exactly what it's like. Yeah, it does bear a striking <laughs> resemblance to a quarry in Wales, doesn't it? As as many, you know, alien planets do. <laughs> it's, it is uncanny, really. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they did put they they put a big metal door thing down, so give me yeah. credit, they dressed it a bit. They did. I got on them. This isn't so much a note, but just something I, I saw, which was funny. Um, well, I thought it was funny. You know how um, I do Nathan nitpicks a thing and it can be quite just pedantic and just the silliest shit? Yeah. Um, <laughs> on IMDb, I went on IMDb, and there's a section for goofs. Um, so just like little errors, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Um, and there's there's one here. Um, when Ida estimates the ancient trap door is 30 feet in diameter, the Doctor is standing next to it. Assuming that he's about 6 feet tall, a closer estimate of the door's diameter would be 15 to 18 feet. <laughs> Fuck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you really did find the most pedantic thing you could think of, didn't you? So, that's not me, by the way. That's that's not me. I just want to make that very clear. Yeah, okay. that's that's. Does it tell you the IMDb user that submitted? It that doesn't. Trivia? No, it doesn't. Damn, we're gonna does change the that... segment to IMDb user nitpicks a thing. Might do that actually. <laughs> it does. It does say that four people found that helpful. So how that should tell you something. I do have a pretty pedantic Nathan nitpicks a thing though. Oh, go on. I'd like to hear this. And it is pretty pedantic and stupid. Um, there's one moment when they're they're about to go down the uh, the the elevator shaft, and uh, the ca- I can't remember the captain's name, but whatever his name is, he, uh, he he when he's getting ready for that, he says, "Counting down in ten, nine, <laughs> eight. Well, no. <laughs> so so you're gonna get to one, and then you're gonna count, are you? Is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna begin <laughs> counting in just any minute now." <laughs> That that that's very pedantic though. That's serious fucking redditor. Well, actually, bullshit. Yeah, um, but at the same time, silly, funny little yeah. silly dialogue thing. Yeah, you wouldn't get mistakes like that if you supported the Writers Guild of America. You have should stop it with this. What is this joke? <laughs> um, the Bolero is <clears throat> their their song of choice in the Great. Fucking Descent. hate the Bolero, man. Fuck the Bolero. You don't like the Bolero? I like the music, right? The music's fine. Okay? Oh, you don't like Torville and Dean. I don't like Torville and Dean. All right, fuck Torville and first of all, massive fucking Tories. Um, probably yeah. they give off that vibe. Second of all, um, my mum used to watch Dancing on Ice a lot when I mm. was a young boy, and I still lived with my mum. Um, yep. 
and dancing on ice. It, it was like it's not one of those shit shit like fucking strictly come dancing, but it's on ice or whatever. Um, and the end, the last episode was always the same. The every skating couple would always do the bolero, so it was just the same dance like fucking six times in a row, and it was so boring. And I hated oh, it God, so really? much. Yeah. That sounds like that, to be fair, they a lot of them do that. Like the X Factor, they they basically like in the the final of the X Factor, they always get one guy that sings nothing but ballads and one guy that sings nothing but pop, and they're like the winning song that you both have to sing is a ballad. I'm like, I wonder who the fuck will win. Is it the guy who's trained to sing ballads and the guy who's not? <laughs> no one. It's One Direction. That's true. No, they didn't win, but they won. Oh, they won. They won life. Yeah, That's, they did. Yeah, who actually won that year? Uh, what Bet year you was they're it? not as famous as Harry Styles. No, they they never are. They never are. Um, Bet you they've not appeared in the MCU. Oh, I know exactly who it was because there was a controversy surrounding it. Who was it? Was it, it Wagner? Was, no, it was. <laughs> it was Matt Cardle. Um, who fucks and was, Matt Cardle? I I remember him because he he wore like a big little painter's cap. Like he looked like a proper DIY painter, uh, decorator bloke. I'm gonna um, Google this guy. I've never yeah, yeah. heard of him. I'll, I'll tell you the controversy while you familiarise yourself with him. And he he won, and you can Harry Harry Styles, famed <clears throat> frontman of One Direction, can be seen going over to Matt Cardo as he accepts his confetti and applause. Yeah, and and you can see him clearly mouthing, "Think of all the pussy you're gonna get." <laughs> really? <laughs> Live on X Factor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. fun that's what i like harry stars i think he's funny yeah he seems, I like, he seems see, like a decent bloke i always see tiktoks of like his shows and stuff you know him just doing like crowd work at his shows he seems yeah. like a fun guy yeah I, I feel like he works a room he's got a good sense of style yeah i couldn't get away with it though. not not for bigger men no style. no yeah I think a if crop. I tried to pull off that style, I'd get done for indecent exposure. <laughs> a crop top is not for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need the we... I need the big and tall long line range, please. <laughs> we should bring back the crop top. Well, we should bring the crop top for big boys. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm looking. I've never fucking heard of this cunt. Well, yeah, I probably I mean, have, but like, I, I like know. he he had the one single. Go to number one after the, yeah. the week after he won X Factor, and then he was never heard of again. Do you remember when fucking everyone basically got sick of X Factor being Christmas number one every year? So there was that big campaign to get Rage Against the Machines killing in the name of to number mm. one, and then it actually happened. That was a good year. That was a good year, but then since hasn't it just been monopolized by Lad Bible, Lad Lad Baby, not Lad Bible. <laughs> Might as well be the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, for like the past like fucking three or four years, I think it's been that fucking <sighs> fucking sausage rolls. Yeah. Awful. Is man. is anything funnier than <laughs> sausage rolls? The peak of comedy. The, did you did rolls. you listen to the, the the last one? Was fucking dreadful. Was but it really? I think the worst line on it because it was it was that Band Aid song, wasn't it? Which was already pretty bad. Um, yeah. But the, the the whole shtick of it was because the the cost of living crisis and everything. One of the lines in it was, um, "We all need Martin Lewis to help us out or some shit." Right. And it was very bad. Yeah. It was very that bad. Does sound- you know they've they've got look we're 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 grown men with two podcasts so we're not much in a position to speak, but well. they have a podcast that is unironically named Live Laugh Love. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, go and vote them no stars. <laughs> Let's get to the top of the Spotify charts by beating Live Laugh Love. We should release a fucking Christmas song this year. <laughs> about what <laughs> what would I if we had if we had to release a Christmas single and like we needed to find something to carry us in the vein of how they use sausage rolls what would it be it would probably be weirdos celebrated weirdos what are you watching go stay here it's Christmas time it's Christmas time 
awful, first of all. Oh. It's also like oh Christmas lights aren't flashing because people can't afford the bills. We all need Martin Lewis this Christmas time. But say a prayer. And that's Martin Lewis singing. Oh my god. Pray for a sausage roll. What a bag of shit. Yeah. Also, you multi-millionaire, shut the fuck up preaching yeah. to the fucking Tory government. Donate some of your money, you prick. Yeah. Fuck them. Uh, our Christmas single would be... I don't know. What's our thing? I don't think we have a thing. Chaos. Oh, God. Do we not have a thing? Oh, no. We need a thing. Oh, no. We need a thing to stay relevant. We need to be popping. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I feel like we got off track massively. Oh, um, yeah. By... <laughs> yeah, we're talking about sausage rolls. Yeah. Well, what was we talking about? How did we get here? I have a sneaking suspicion it was about Doctor Who. Yeah, maybe. But how did we get here? Look, they go down to the cave. Yeah, they're the in Uda, the cave. The Uda are attacking upstairs. The Uda are attacking. They're throwing their um, translator balls everywhere. And yeah. electrocuting people in the face. And the multi purpose translatable. That fucking security guard, he was fucking useless, man. He didn't do anything. Shoot them with your gun. He just stood there and watched as it came up to him and killed him. Yeah. Like, at least try to defend yourself. Yeah. The other guy at least ran. Yeah, fair enough. That's I would I'd simply do. just push them down the stairs. I would simply not be in that situation. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'd take the TARDIS out of there. <laughs> yeah, before it fell. Um, yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the funniest lines in this episode was when, like, uh, Addy said something like, oh, come on, it can't be that bad, or, or whatever, something to that effect. And doctor and the Doctor was like, oh, did you have to say that? That's like saying uh, blah, 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 or this would be the best Christmas Wolford's ever had. Or, and that, that killed me. <laughs> that was so it's- funny, man. That is good, yeah. You get you get a little gold every now and then like that. I love it. Ten's good at those one Christmas special. He is good, yeah. He is good. Um. So yeah, cliffhanger. Next, they look down into the pit. Something's coming. I tell you what. If there's one thing I truly love, it's some really good shaking, crashing, and stumbling acting. Yeah. You know, like they're in the TARDIS, and the TARDIS is. Flying through the vortex and it's rockety and it's rickety. The TARDIS is a stable set. Yeah. So the actors have to bounce around and stumble <laughs> about to to give that effect that it's actually doing it. And maybe, you know, you're on a moon which is quaking and trembling and all that mm. stuff, but actually you're in a quarry in Wales. Yeah. So you've got to just stumble about on your feet for a little bit. I think they um, pull it off quite well. They do, they do. It's it's quite good, and sure, they'll give the camera a little shake as well, just for yeah. for good measure. One of my favourite videos on the internet is um, there's an old episode of Star Trek which basically does the same thing, like the like Star Trek from the sixties, like the Enterprise, I imagine, is crashing for some situation, so everybody's in the bridge just bouncing about, but someone's taking that footage and just basically stabilised it. So the frame bounces about, but like it's it's stabilized, so they stay still, <laughs> and, and you can just see them all just bouncing about. Oh it's, no, it's so funny! It's one of the best things ever. Uh, it, it, how else are they gonna do it? I respect yeah, it. I, yeah, I know, but it's very funny though. I do like it. I do too. It was good. There is a lot of it. In this. There is, yeah, there is. It's one of the charms. It is. Uh, do we have anything else on this episode? No, well, no. The pit is open. The beast is free. Uh, to be continued. To be continued next week in another episode I haven't watched in a very, very long time. I watched it tonight. You watched both? No, I didn't. I don't do it. I say that breaks tradition. Yeah, no. I want to. I, I always, like... Whenever it's a to, well, most of the time I do. Anyway, when it's a to be continued, I'm like, oh, let's go to the next one. But then I'm like... No, I can't. I can't talk about the episode if I've seen next week's because then it's it bleeds into one story. Then yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, no, I'm with you. 
Um, <laughs> I think it might be time for our favourite segment ever created. Oh, for fuck's sake, you're not wrong. Weirdo of the Week! Um, this is everyone's favourite segment of the show. It's where we get the chance, the opportunity, the privilege to take a look back and reflect on some of the weird and wonderful and grubby little characters who come across our TV screens each and every week in this silly little show, Docky Who, that we love so much. Um, so, Lawrence, let's take a look back. Who's your weirdo for this week? Uh, so, I don't know his actual name, but he is okay. the guy with long hair uh, on the ship. He is, I believe he's called Danny. Is I, I think he might be the ethics man. Yeah, Danny, I believe his name is. Yeah, sideburns, clean shaven, long hair. Is a look. His hair isn't that long. Mine's longer. Yeah, not to you, because you have very long hair. It's long yeah. to everyone else. It's I still long you. to you. It's not that long. <laughs> mine's seen longer. Long, seen longer, not impressed. Yeah, mine's longer. <laughs> Fair. Um, <clears throat> yeah, basically, um, not too weird, just something that felt out of place a little bit is when he says, um, he would know, he's definitively sure he would know if something was wrong with his ship or wrong with the ship and something was wrong in general. Um, when the ship has been out loud <laughs> declaring satanic fucking <laughs> teachings for about an hour. Uh, and I, I seemingly have to assume that he didn't hear any of those. All right. I don't get what you mean, but all right. Look, slim pickings, all right? There's not much weird behaviour this episode. You want to talk about slim pickings? Let's talk about my weird of the week. Because oh, mine yes. is <laughs> Harry Styles. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to get so much pussy to Matt Cardell in like, I don't know, 2011 or some shit. This is not allowed. You have to pick someone from the episode. <laughs> All right, it's that security guard who didn't do anything. Fine. The Great. segment's slowly dying, isn't it? Like, <laughs> no, as Doctor Who gets less weird... <laughs> it'll get more weird, I think. It does get more weird as it goes on. Yeah. She That's wait so- until Banner Cavalata shows up. <laughs> 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 nah, see, I don't know. I think the two guys that just fucking are ready to die for chicken are possibly weird. <laughs> no, nah, you leave them alone. No, they're good. They're good lads. They won you it in leave, the competition. You leave that guy from Tracy Beaker alone. He is the guy from Tracy Beaker. He is, yeah. That's where I know him from. Yeah, but where is Banner Cafalata from? Vochi. Yep. Vin Vochi. Vin Vochi. Oh yes, because they come up again, didn't they? Yeah, because they're green and they're like yeah. Vin Vochi glass. They're like, Look at our glass. Yeah. This will play a part in your downfall. They say to him. Little sizzle. Um, <laughs> Who was that knocking at the door, Nathan? Is is it is it the Wolf. podcast police that says this has gone on for too long? <laughs> it might be. They're here to it arrest might you. Be. <laughs> no, I'm innocent. Um, look, um, yeah, that's it. I reckon. Yeah, I'd say so too. Give yeah. this podcast a little follow on Twitter at Still Got Legs Pod. New episodes come out every Monday, 10 a.m. Share them with your mates. Share them with your Hoovian friends. Uh, and give us a little review as well. Yeah. Just uh, go to your podcast platform of choice, go to the rate and review section, give us five stars, no less, or I'll find you and I'll fucking beat you up. Yeah. So... <laughs> he will, he's not joking, he's putting I'll on his fu- gloves now. I'll do it, I'll fucking do it. Um, if you play Animal Crossing, message me, <laughs> and um, I've, got, I've got massively back into Animal Crossing this week. Well, the past like few weeks, actually. Um, and I restarted my island, so I'm trying to build everything. So if you have some cool recipes, um, please message me and, and give me some shit. I'd appreciate it. Um, the slow decline of this show. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, unbelievable. What do you mean? You're promoting your Animal Crossing. I'm not promoting anything. It's just a request. That's true. Give him his recipes. Give me some recipes. I need the recipe for an iron wood dresser. I would very much appreciate it. Um, well, you need a recipe for a furniture. Yeah, the, a, a crafting recipe. Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought you were talking about like actual cookbook, like you're going to make something for the town. You can do that too. But... And Tom Nook, the filthy capitalist swine. 
Yeah, we all know Tom Nook. Um, yeah, that's it. We've got another podcast, another happy pod. Go listen oh, yeah. to that. Another happy pod. Um, episode on Star Wars Rebels is out now. Yes, correct. Episode on Ted Lasso coming this Friday. Correct. Yeah, there we yeah. go. <laughs> we did it, read it. Um, and uh, next week, more of this. Yep. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Goodbye.